Hello, welcome to the new Class D, and today we're going to upgrade a CD player with a clock. For the purpose, we have a Riga Apollo player from a customer, and before we upgrade them, we always test if they work right out of the, out of the box. If it's working, so we can start the upgrade now. But yeah, I'm going to move the camera over here so you can take a closer look. The drive controller is right here, and this is what we're going to concentrate on to begin with. Because here we have the clock, here's the board from the other side. And I'm just going to show you where the connections for the crystal is, here on the other side. Uh, it's a bit hard to see when you're looking through the camera lens, but uh, you see them right here. That's a connection of the crystal. These two here. And the two capacitors we always have. And the feedback resistor. So the connection goes to these two platings here. There are several ways to find out which pin you should connect the clock signal to. The correct pin on the crystal is the uh, crystal input or XI input. But uh, sometimes you can find the data sheet of the chip that is connected to, sometimes not. In this case, we cannot find the data sheet. So we have to use what we call the brute force method. Um, you, you need a small resistor for this, like, a, like this one here. Just a standard 100 kilo ohm resistor. I uh, hope you can see it. And um, what you do is you solder it from just any pin of the crystal here um, to ground. Um, then you connect the player again. If the CD still works, it's not the pin you're looking for. Uh, if the CD player doesn't work anymore, well, it means the crystal oscillator has stopped. So that's the input pin of the oscillator. And that's the pin you're looking for to connect the clock to. Okay, so I connected resistor to just one pin of the crystal and then ground. The ground is found here in the, the point where the two capacitors next to the crystal meet. They're connected to this big ground plane around here. So, okay, so I put the machine back together again. That was like 30 seconds of horror, but now. <laughs> It's, uh, it's put together again, so let's see if it's still working now. Looks fine so far. Yep. Okay, so now I, I move the resistor from this pin to this pin, but still to ground here in the middle. Just be sure that the solder is not touching the other side of the small capacitor there. It's not, it's not very big. Okay, so I put it back together again now for the second time. Let's see what happens if we turn it on. Let's push the play button here. No reaction at all. So I would say the one we have now is definitely the input for the crystal. So that's the one we're going to use to connect the clock to. I don't know which pin to, from the crystal to connect to the clock signal. So what we do is we put a little mark here with the speed marker so we can remember for later. Because in a moment the, there's not going to be any uh, sign of the crystal anymore. Just going to remove my uh, resistor here first. Then I'm going to remove the the old crystal itself, the 16.9, and since it's a, a through-hole plated print, printed circuit, I have to use a special technique because it's not good to just suck out the solder from uh, this kind of PCB. It's going to break. So what you do is you add a lot of tin to both both uh, terminals of the clock, and then you heat both of them simultaneously. Careful to not. Uh, get any of the uh, surrounding small SMD parts with you. 
Now the, the component is gone, so I'm just going to use some wick to remove the solder. Just for good measure, I'm, I'm also going to put a mark on the other side of the board, because in this case I'm going to place the actual connection for, for my clock cable and the clock injection signal. We're going to need a good ground connection for the clock also. And the one we got before is just perfect. The one where the two capacitors decoupling the crystal meet each other. That's just the perfect one. So I'm just going to... Uh, we have good access to it here because in this particular player there's a hole in the middle of the crystal as well, which is not used for anything. So I'm just going to put a piece of component wire from a, a resistor here and bend it over. It's a little different from machine to machine where you get the... How you can connect the... Okay, before we finish this connection here, you should remove the capacitor that's connected to the input side of the crystal. You don't actually need to remove the other one. Okay, at this point it's a good time to find a, a good power source for the clock. And the one I'm looking at first would be the big capacitor here. Because it's gonna add some power here. And with my um, multimeter here, I'm going to measure the actual voltage on the, on the capacitor. I can access it here on the bridge. It has 13.4 volts here, which is just perfect for our clock. So here's the power wire con that comes with the, the clock. And um, I'm going to connect it to the capacitor. Um, the side of the capacitor with the big line on it is a minus and the one with no marking on is plus on the capacitor. On the cable it's the same. The one with a blue line on it is a minus and as you see I connected the, the two uh, wires together here, that's two minus wires. And the other two are plus, like this. That's the way to do it. And there's a nice little hole here I can put it to the other side. Looks pretty easy. So that's about it for this side here. Now time to fit the clock cable. This is the one it comes with the kit and I prepped it by stripping it and then adding a little bit of solder to the the wires here. So remember we put that little wire in here uh, from the bottom in the middle hole. Uh, comes in handy now because um, um, it's easy to connect the ground connection to that and, uh, and we have marking of the right clock injection point. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we have the transport sitting here in the middle somewhere, so we don't want to go too much in that direction with the mechanical stuff. So I think a good place to to put the clock will be maybe over here, something like that, or maybe over here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these uh, black guys here to mechanically fix my clock cable here to make a good solid installation. During the shield wire to the little piece of ground wire we did before and then the clock wire directly into the the terminal we just determined before so it's it's nice and solid it's not going to break off this one i'm going to fix it i know it's one of the, the clock part to the analog stage so, like this is a good fixing. Like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little piece of standoff foam under it just to stabilize a little bit mechanically. And all good. So, just a matter of connecting it now. Like that. And like this.
Jetzt singen. Thanks for watching and see you next time.